Hey there, Fit Fam. Welcome to the only podcast where we're breaking the mold and rewriting the rules. I'm here to debunk the myths, spill the tea, and serve a hefty dose of reality. No matter where you're at in your journey, we've got something for everybody. So buckle up because we're about to unleash the basics in the most unapologetic way possible. From shedding pounds to embracing your inner badass, I'm here to remind you that skinny is so last season and the basics are anything but boring. So grab your favorite piece of protein and your water bottle and get ready to be empowered, entertained, and educated because being a basics bitch has never looked this good. Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Don't Call Me Skinny. Excited to have you here with me today. Okay, we are going to go ahead and talk about a couple of things. First, obviously, Basics on Demand BOD is open. You can hop in for $29 till the first 50 people hit. And then we are going to expand the price up to the normal. It's like take it off as launch price, essentially. Um, and then I also have another, I'm doing a, a, a master class. So if you are in my on my email list and or uh, you are a podcast listener, you get this masterclass for $33. Outside of that, as of, I believe, tomorrow, so when this airs, it will be $55. But if you click the link in the show notes, your link is $33. There's going to be a five-day masterclass. I'm going to host this in Telegram. I'm going to teach daily each thing. The whole point of this masterclass is called Consistency Over Perfection. It's crazy how that's the name of my company. And I'm going to teach for five days each day is going to be a little bit different, walking you through the steps on how to show up consistently for yourself when shit happens, when life happens. Because at the end of the day, I don't give a shit what diet you choose to do. I don't care what packaged foods you want to eat. I don't care um, how badly you want and desire this process. It's going to knock you flat on your ass at some point. I don't, again, it, I don't care if you have Octavia delivered to your fucking door. I don't care because it's still going to knock you out if you cannot show up consistently. (laughs) That's the whole point, right? We have to make sure that what we're doing, we can still show up for. That is the whole purpose behind the driver of getting you to where you want to go. So that masterclass starts on the, on Monday. Um, I believe that's the 26th of August. We are getting ready for, yep, 26th of August. So uh, we are starting Monday. Again, if you are on the, if you're a podcast listener, you get it for $33. Everybody else is going to pay $55 outside of my email list and outside of uh, the podcast listener. So you're going to want to hop in there. Link is in the show notes. If you have questions around it, if you want to know, is this for me? Let's have a conversation. But if you truly don't know how to show up consistently for yourself at every time, something big in your life happens or even small, but it knocks you out, knocks you down and you have a hard time continuously showing up and you have to start over every Monday. This is for you. If you have an all or nothing mindset, this is for you. We are going to be walking through, literally I have every single day is planned where we're going to be teaching on a different topic. We're going to be teaching and I'm not, I'm not going to be teaching this on here on my podcast, right? Um, we're going to talk about what consistency consistency means and how it is applicable in your life. We're going to be talking about self-sabotage and all or nothing. We're going to be doing a calendar and phone audit because, y'all, we have to get honest about where we're spending time, effort, and energy. Um, this is real. We have to learn about habit stacking, and then we have to learn how to make realistic goals so that we can show up when life happens. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can ask any one of my one-on-one clients, life fucking happens, and it happens constantly, whether it's travel, illness, kids, job, relationships, whatever the case is, it doesn't end. It's constant. So understand that this is this is a key to your success. So 33 bucks, hop in. We start Monday. It's in a Telegram chat. I'd be happy to pull you in. Very excited. This is like I'm very excited. I haven't been this excited to teach a masterclass in a really fucking long time. So this is going to be motherfucking epic. And you're going to get a lot of fucking value. So, and some tangible things, actually, like real things like PDFs and things that you can actually start implementing immediately. So we, in that masterclass, are going to talk about what consistency means. But today I want to kind of define failure. And I talked a little bit about this with group coaching because I thought this was super important. I felt like, um, we, we all have our own definition of this, kind of like, which is why we're also going to define what consistency means, because what I think it means may not be what you think it means, and how I apply it in my life, it might have to look a little bit different for you. Like, everybody's, what means consistent to them 
is very, very different. And so understanding what that actually means to you and then how to implement it is, is important. Just like understanding how you define failure. What does that look like? How does that, what, what does that mean to you, right? Um, I kind of post, I think I even made a post about this, literally. Um, <clears throat> and if we were to define it per uh, Google <laughs> or DuckDuckGo, <laughs> whatever, um, it's, it is, this is the noun version of this, the condition or fact of not achieving the desired end or ends, um, the condition or fact of being insufficient or falling short is another one, uh, the act or or fact of failing to pass a course or test. I always was told you're never allowed to use the word in the definition. A decline in strength or effectiveness, right? So there's even, even when you look it up, like even when you're looking at this, like I don't know that I would um, say that failing is a decline in strength or effectiveness because there are a lot of things that we aren't failing at when we have a decline in something, um, and I just don't think that's failing. I think that's just shifting. So even, even looking at this online and looking at multiple different definitions, I, it's different. So I don't believe in one of those definitions. I think that's come, I think it's wrong. Uh, or, or it's not how I choose to define what failure is. So, um, my, my definition of failure is very simple. It's very cut and dry. It's very to the point. It's very, uh, it is what it is. And I did not record this on my stream yard. Whoops, my video recording. Okay, so what I define failure is, is very simple. It is literally one word and it is an act of doing this word. I mean, it's the act, it's what the word is and that's quitting. Failure to me is quitting. That's it. That is all. That's the only thing that failure means to me. Failure means quitting. Now, I've ta- I've done a whole episode on like, what's the definition of quitting? Because quitting things is good too. Like people who quit alcohol, okay, that's, I don't think that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and that's not how I'm defining. Yes, I understand people are quitting alcohol or quitting drugs or quitting those things. Some people need to quit things. Yes, I, I understand and I feel you. But when I'm in the health and wellness space, for me, that is enhancement of life. That's not quitting something, right? When we're cutting out alcohol, we're cutting out drugs, we're quitting the all or nothing mindset where that's called for me, I define that as enhancement or like moving forward. Okay. I don't define those things. Yes, we're quote unquote per the definition quitting that thing, but it is to enhance what the benefit that we are going to reap from that is much larger, right? And that's just how I define it. You can be like, okay, whatever, Sarah, you're wrong. Cool, that's fine. Totally okay. Also, if you um, find any value from this, if you're listening to these podcasts and you're receiving something from this, please, please, please take a screenshot and share it. Uh, I am only word of mouth. That's it. That's all I am. Word of mouth. If you see my stuff on Instagram and you think it's funny or you think it hits or you think it's awesome and amazing, fucking please share that shit. Like I am literally word of mouth. I do not have millions of dollars that backs me up, that does all the things. I don't have those things. Please, 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 please. I don't know the, 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 who's that Sabrina Carpenter? I don't know. Anyway, it was like a, it's a popular trending song. Okay. But seriously, please share it. Okay. Outside of that quitting. So that is how I define failure. That is it. Especially when it comes to this spot. Now, why do we find it so easy to quit? Why is it so easy to fail our health? Okay. And I truly believe because people don't actually understand the definition or their own definition of failing, right? I could have a client that sees not making it to the gym seven days a week as failing. I could have somebody seeing not making it to the gym three times a week as failing. I could have somebody say, if I don't make it to the gym, hit 10,000 steps, hit all my protein, I'm failing. Do you see how all that is different? There's different nuance within that. So it's not as easy as to just say, oh, I failed today because I ate an Oreo. 
Is that failing eating an Oreo or a bag of chips or even having a binge episode or not making it to the gym or hitting the snooze and sleeping in? Are those things actually failing? I don't think so. In my opinion, the act of failing happens after that. When you make a decision like, oh, I'm not good enough, I can't show up, or oh my God, I ate an Oreo, I ruined my whole fucking diet. An Oreo is not going to ruin your diet. Even a sleeve of Oreos, it's not going to ruin your whole fucking progress. A whole bag of chips isn't going to ruin your fucking progress. Like, it's just not. But you think that's failing, so you end up failing because of that, aka, in my opinion, you quit. Never mind, this diet's not for me. I'll just start again Monday. Never mind, I had a cheat meal, so fuck it all. Just throw it all the way in. Never mind. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you move on and you quit and you're just like over it. And you had that one little blip shoop, in the radar and you're like, oh, never mind. I'm out. I failed. I failed. And you know, and here's another thing about failing. I talked about this, I think, last night on my call too. Everybody's like, oh, I'm so scared to fail. I don't want to start. I don't want to hire a coach because I'm scared to fail. No, I don't think you want to hire a coach for two reasons, actually. I don't think it has anything to do with failing. How many times have you, quote unquote, failed, even in my definition, a diet? The majority of you, how many times have you fucking started your health journey and stopped and you quit? I'm going to beg to say, your brain loves to fail. You Enjoy it. It's where you feel the most safe. What you don't want to do is start to see and visualize and be that next better self because that shit's scary and uncomfortable. So we're just going to sit here in our failures and be cool about it because that's comfortable. I, I, I started that diet a month and a half ago. Fuck that shit. Failed that. I started a diet Monday. And it's only Tuesday (laughs) and I failed because I ate ice cream last night and I did. I did. I'm going to talk about this on Friday, no filter. Your ability to shift and adjust when things come up. I'm going to tell you what I did last night when this happened to me, okay? But we have to be able to understand the definition of failure. Some people would look at what I did last night, which is eat ice cream and say that you failed. You can't have ice cream on a diet. Are you crazy? You're not allowed to have ice cream. The hell? That's fake. You can't do that. That's cheating. You cheated on your diet. No. But some people look at that as cheating, so they quit. Oh, I made one mistake. As if we don't make mistakes, as if we that's not how we learn, as if I don't even find having ice cream a mistake. <laughs> I mean, what the heck? Where, where, how are we so far gone that that's what we now deem as a mistake is having ice cream or a fucking, you know, French fries or something? Like, I don't understand how we're so far that way at this point that that's what we deem as failing. It, it's wild to me. Wild. You know, I, and, and I, I talk about this client a lot because one, there, she has a lot of good, relatable fucking experiences that I'm sure the majority of you can fucking relate to. But two, she's very honest and open with me and communicative about her process and her thoughts and feelings and experiences that she has had currently and in the past that are, again, very relevant to you, Right. You know, and I always talk about this, make it make sense. She would not eat oatmeal because oatmeal was bad because the glyphosates that were in them. And she had everybody on TikTok and Instagram screaming at her through her phone that they were terrible, no good, bad for you. They're going to kill you. That Oreos have pesticides in them. They're going to kill you. Okay. But she would eat fast food. She'd go to Dunkin' Donuts. She would eat chips. So those things are okay, but oatmeal, oatmeal was not okay. Do you want to know how many times she stopped and started her shit? A lot. A lot. It's relatable. It makes sense. Because she lived in this all or nothing. This is what I'm, this is why I'm teaching this master class. It's literally why I'm teaching this master class. Because this is the, the whole process that we go through. That's a whole literal process that we go through on this journey 
is, is like the self-sabotage, the quitting, the I'll just start again on Monday. Oh, never mind. I already had a cheat meal. I'll just eat like shit the rest of the day, which is why we don't do cheat meals with, with my program. That's not even a real thing. And that's also why we spend a lot of time in the basics buildup. It's understanding and building this foundation that you don't fucking have. Everybody just was like, okay, you want to lose weight? Let's go put you in a diet phase. That used to be me too. It used to be who I was as a coach. I have learned. Now I could say, oh my gosh, I failed all those people. No, I did with what I thought I could in the moment and the time. And now I don't take people that just are like, mm, I got to lose weight, 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 the scale's got to go down, the scale's got to go down. It will chill out and let's build your foundation so when you can go into that diet phase, you can lose weight. That's what we want to do, right? I'm looking at my notes here. So understanding what failure means. I want you to take a moment to think about that. What does that mean to you? How does it apply to you? Do you believe what I believe? Do you believe something different? I'm curious to know if you want to reach out and share with me. I'd love to hear it. What does failure mean to you? How do you define it? And then any time that you have a moment where you start to get healthy, you go start to the gym, you start to walk again, you start trying to add more protein or incorporate quote unquote more whole foods into your lifestyle and you make a mistake and you eat ice cream and you have an Oreo or you don't make it to the gym one day or you don't whatever. I want you to sit back and think about, oh, wait a minute, did I actually fail or am I just human? <laughs> because if, if my definition of failing is, like Sarah says in her opinion, is quitting, I didn't quit on myself. I just had a blip on the radar and a blip on the radar is comebackable from. I don't think that's a word, but we're going to call it a word. It's comebackable from. You can come back from a blip. You can come back from a step off the path and get back on the path. I have another client, same thing, super fucking relatable. This poor woman. And it's like every time she gets some, just like some real good, like uh, momentum going, not motivation, momentum, she gets knocked out like every time. So recently she went on a trip to Las Vegas. She was uh, with her husband and she was celebrating their anniversary. And she uh, was very excited about this. It was going to be the first time she wasn't working in a while and she just wanted to chill out and relax. And guess what happened to her? <clears throat> she got sick and she came back and she was like super sick. She's been super sick for like over a week now. Right? And, you know, in some of her messages to me, she keeps reminding herself and she says it, and then she has to correct herself. Like, okay, I know I didn't fall off, but there's still this piece of her that believes she did because she's still having that thought. Okay, I, I fell off. I know I didn't fall off, but I, I, you know, and she catches herself saying that because that's what she has always believed that every time that she has made progress and life got in the way, she did fall off, quote unquote. She did roll down the fucking prooker, pricker bush, you know, hill. That is what happened. And she's had to do a very, um, she's had to do a very hard process of retelling the story to herself. You know, last week I talked about how my teeth loved to just be where they were for 37 years. So they moved back. This is a prime example of how this is built into our bodies. She has always, quote unquote, fallen off. That's what she knows. That's why she uses that language. And now she's having to go back and reprogram. I didn't fall off. I got sick. Yeah. I didn't fall off. I traveled. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, we make these little blips on the radar fucking explosions and way bigger of a deal than what they actually need to be. We don't need to make blips you know, mountains out of molehills. We don't have to do that. We get to have life happen to us and it doesn't have to mean something bad about us. It doesn't mean that we don't care about our health. It doesn't mean that we're quitting. It doesn't mean that we're falling off. It's like, oh my God, can I just acknowledge the fact that I got sick and I feel like absolute trash and I'm having a hard time even working, let alone like 
giving a shit about what kind of food I'm eating, if I'm even eating at all, because I don't feel like it. You want to know what that makes her? Not a failure, not a wagon faller offer, also not a word. It makes her human. It makes her a human being who has struggles, who has life happen. And she can be a person that struggles and has life happen and still work towards her health. But it's embedded in who she is. That's why she's catching herself all the time saying that verbiage. And it's something I had to point out to her where she's like, well, I know I'm not actually falling off, but there's a piece of you that does believe it because it keeps coming up. Every time life happens, that's what happens, right? And even though it's worded, right? Well, I know I didn't fall off. Do you? And we have this conversation every time I see the same verbiage come through because she believes it. Now, again, that she should because that is what is embedded in who she is. There's nothing wrong with that. When we start bringing awareness to what that is and how that works and what that looks like, then we stop making it mean something all the time. We stop making it mean something. So when we can say, okay, I notice that every time some life happens, I constantly say, I quote unquote, no, I'm not feeling falling off or I fell off. Well, I know I didn't fall off, but, and we are using the same verbiage. Okay. Because maybe deep down, I really do believe this about myself because maybe that's always been my story. And I'm trying to rewrite that story right now. So it's okay. You, I will just have to remind you that you didn't fall off not me, but herself, like she can remind herself, you didn't fall off, you had life happen and you're a human being. And it's okay for life to happen and still work towards our goals. You know, for her, it's like, you know, she's like, I mean, she sounded like absolute garbage. I'm not gonna lie when she left me a voice. I'm like, please stop talking (laughs) and go to bed, right? In that moment, what is her job? For her health, what is her job in that? Go fucking sleep. Go rest. Drink some tea. I don't care about your workouts. I don't care about your protein. I don't care. Stay hydrated and rest. That's your fucking job. Does that mean that you failed? No. When we stop making everything have to be perfect and show up for every little bitty thing. And then when that doesn't happen, we say, I failed. I'm a failure. See, I knew I couldn't do it. And we start into that negative spiral of language and self-doubt and self-sabotage and bad self-talking. I mean, it's bad. I don't know any other way to say it. It's not helpful to your process. That's what ends up happening. You know, and I'm doing this mission 180. If you didn't listen to the episode, go back and listen to the episode. I'm doing mission 180 and I've had a couple of days this week. You know, I, something, part of what I'm going to talk about on Friday No Filter is this piece of, you know, my week did not go as planned as all, as I, as I needed it to, wanted it to. And so what I thought my week was going to look like, it didn't look like that. And I could have just said, man, fuck this. Fuck mission 180. Never mind. I'm over it. This is stupid. I'm never going to get there. I failed the whole week. I did all these things. I'm like, nope, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up my bootstraps. I'm going to fucking focus on what I can. I'm going to keep putting it out there because people need to see it. I've gotten so many messages, actually specifically TikTok, which is odd. Uh, So many messages saying how relatable that is, how relatable the content is. Thank you for showing up every day and showing us that it doesn't have to always be perfect. Thank you so much. Like that is wild to me, especially coming from TikTok because a lot of TikTok people are not very nice. (laughs) I don't know. There's definitely a difference in TikTok and Instagram um, users. I mean, I know some of them are similar, but like, or the same, but wow, TikTok is wild. And I could, I could just say, forget it. I failed. I didn't, my week didn't go as planned. Nothing went as planned. I failed. And that would, that would be the story that I tell. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I am here to show you that you can still do this when life happens. You are capable of this when life happens. And it does not define you as anything besides a human. That's it. Trying to figure it out, trying to work your way through it, 
trying to figure out what works for you, trying to make shit work so that you can get there, so that you can feel confident, so that you can feel good about you, so that you can have energy and be in a better mood and have a better relationship with your children and your husband or whoever your partner is. It doesn't fucking matter. Like all of those things, that is the goal. And the moment that you label yourself failure, I failed. You, you take yourself right out. You do not help yourself at all. So I want you to think about what failure means and then start applying that definition when you quote unquote think that you fail. Right? How many times your kids get up and ride a bike? How many times your kids try to tie their shoes or walk or anything else? Could you imagine if they were just like, well, I failed. I'm never walking. <laughs> Guess it's not happening for me. I mean, that's literally the same fucking application, just different driver, different method, different outcome. I want to learn how to walk. Okay. I tried to get up and walk and I fell flat on my face. I quit. I'm, I'm a failure. I suck. Wow. We would look at that and go, hmm, that's interesting. That's interesting for sure. Okay. And think about how your kids talk about the self, their selves and the language that they use. I hear language all the time out of my children that is very negative. And we're trying to work through that and flip that language. And a lot of it, you know, honestly is it's my own language that I use. It's what they hear at school from friends. It's what they think of themselves. It's rough. So I want you to start thinking about how do you define failure? What does it mean to you? And how, when you do decide that it's the time to start your health journey and make this happen, how can you start applying that definition in the moment? If you define failure as having an Oreo, well, then I guess if you have an Oreo, that's your definition. But I also want you to be a little bit... um, I don't want to be loose with the definition. What I want you to be is um, realistic. Like, is it realistic to say that eating an Oreo is failing? I don't, I don't think so. That's not my, I mean, that's my opinion. Again, it's my opinion, but that's why I have my own podcast. So I can have whatever fucking opinion I want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of, kind of, but I just don't think that's realistic. So when you're thinking about what your definition is, be realistic about it. Okay. Masterclass starts Monday. 33 bucks. Click the link in the show notes. Let's make it happen. Awesome. Basics on demand, $29. Let's get you in there. It's like the Netflix of training, the Netflix of master classes. It's a whole bunch of master classes combined into a little resource library. So if you have questions about which is right for you, uh, let me know. And also, I'm just going to toss this one out there as fat loss basics group coaching. We are still moving through life. I haven't talked about it in a while, but we are Still in there, kicking ass, taking names. Every week we do a content call. Every other week uh, we do biweekly check-ins and we do uh, biweekly q and A. So you're going to want to get in there. Okay. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. Every day is a great day to have a hump. Thanks so much for listening today. If you laughed, learned, or just felt a vibe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support keeps this ass train chugging along. If you're ready to embrace the basics with a twist, follow me on social media. Links are in the show notes and let's see the ways we can work together. All right, basics bitches. You're not just listeners. You're part of the revolution. Remember, skinny's out, basics are in, and you're looking damn good doing it. So until next time, stay basic.